morning of Tuesday, March the 29th, 2022, the media was awash with the story of the killing, a kidnap of some trained passengers by terrorists in Kaduna, northern Nigeria. Now, the chief of defense staff, Lucky Irabo, said seven people were killed, 29 injured and several others abducted. Six months after that incident, a rice correspondent, Obadiyi, took an undercover return trip on the lagos Ibado 156-kilometer standard gauge to measure the level of security on that route. Welcome to the Mobolaji Johnson train station in Yaba, Lagos. It is said to be the largest railway station in West Africa. The station can conveniently accommodate 6,000 passengers at a go. This train station, named after a soldier who was the military administrator of Lagos, is a clear departure from what train stations used to be before the coming of the Muhammad Buhari's government. Despite that Lagos has other train stations, many travelers prefer setting out from the Mubolaji Johnson train station for the obvious reasons of its welcoming structural aesthetics and ambience, which is akin to that of the Nigerian airport in Ikeja, also in Lagos. The Arise News crew is here on a fact-finding journey to measure the level of security available for travelers and other users of not just this facility, but all that are involved in a typical trip on the 156-kilometer Lagos Ibarra Standard Gauge Railway Line. Officially, TV cameras are not allowed, but many travelers freely took pictures and made videos to keep or share with friends and relatives. The Arise News crew therefore relied on the use of smartphones for undercover recordings. The ticket buying process is 100% manual, no room for digital purchase for the Lagos Ibadan journey, neither was there any strict confirmation of traveler's identity beyond showing of any kind of available identity cards by the traveler. In Nigeria, a plastic ID card could be printed for 500 Naira, which is approximately one US dollar and 29 cents. The crew joined the queue, and upon the presentation of the Arise new staff ID cards, the tickets were issued. There was also a traveler's manifest, which everyone was asked to fill after picking their tickets. The movement from the point of purchase to the departure all was loosely coordinated. Anyone could have joined the travelers with forged tickets and possibly proceed on the trip, except if someone else with a genuine ticket claims the seat number taken by the impostor. Besides, there was no thorough check on the content of travelers' luggage. Once you carry a bag, you are free to travel with it without any question asked. Although the announcer had informed passengers that some security agents are embedded on the train, this reporter never saw anyone that looked as such. To verify the claim that the embedded security team will halt any movement across coaches, no one stopped this reporter as he walked through three different coaches while the train was already in motion. A few other persons were also seen moving freely from one coach to another. Outside the train, shanties were built too close to the rail tracks with all sorts of activities ranging from trading to loitering with little consciousness of the tracks or the moving train. In places without human presence, there was nothing indicative of security or any form of monitoring for the train. A passenger joked that he would be shocked to see anything like a closed circuit camera installed in those deserted areas. The train officials on board walked around to perforate passengers' ticket at every stop, right from Agege to Ijoku, Bakpalanto to Abeokuta, till Olodo in Ibadan. The security level was nice. At the entrance from, I came in through Abeokuta. So at the entrance of Abeokuta, they had this back check, the electronic back checks and all, and there were officers stationed at the entrance to make sure everything was orderly done. So security pro the security process there was fine so far. But while on board, what did you notice? 
Uh, nothing much. This is they just scrutinized everybody before entering. I don't think there was ne there was anything other necessary to do on the train. So it was just a, a, a very good ride. Yes, I went to court in uh, Abeokuta this morning. I'm just returning back to Lagos. Um, it was a good ride, but for covert security, I did not see any. I don't know if they have uh, embedded uh, security, but I didn't see anybody that looks like a security man. The train was actually well secured. Though today, with the, co the coach I was on, I didn't see like security personnel or no. But the last time I came to Lagos, there were I saw some soldiers on like the coach I stayed on. There were some soldiers there. So actually, I think security is actually very very fine. Um, there were some soldiers, some policemen also. Today. On today, on my own coach, you know, I could not actually check other coaches, sir, but on my own coach, there was actually no security personnel there. When we were leaving the other day, uh, uh, they made mention of uh, that they had uh, security people on board. That if there was, but there was nothing like that. So and they can still work on uh, probably to have people, uh, security men that are probably not even in uniform. No, there's no security. I didn't see. Only what I saw was people attending to, to people. In fact, there were a lot of uh, distractions that I never expected. So, so that's just the thing. Uh, I think you need to have uh, embedded security and you need to have uh, physical security um, to dissuade whoever wants to do any criminality. At the Ibadan train station, named after Obafemi Awolowo, the premier of the old western Nigeria, the ticketing process is a little better than what obtained in Lagos as officials double-crossed every ticket before boarding. On the overall, the trip to and fro Ibadan was smooth without the each, but passengers agree that the management needs to work more on security before and during each trip to avoid a repeat of the Kaduna experience. Opa Adeoye, Arise News, Lagos.